Hello, and welcome to our today's webinar about exciting adaptive fury UIs for identity management. My name is Fabian Honervogt, and I'm sub um, security consultant at Exciting Germany. Let's have a look at our today's agenda. Um, first, I will give you a brief overview about Exciting. Um, then we'll see about the challenges and the delivered IDM UIs and our solution on this. Afterwards, I'll give you a be uh, the benefits of our Fury UIs. And at the end, we'll jump into the system and check out our Fury UIs. Let's start with the exciting facts. Exciting was founded 2008 in Switzerland by six SAP experts and expanded since then. Um, since 2012, Exciting has a subsidiary in Germany, since 2013 in the United, Sta uh, United Kingdom, since 2016 in the United States, and um, our latest subsidiary was opened 2018 in Romania as our support center. In 2013, Exciting switched to partner sales. Um, we have currently 80 plus employees where most of them are SAP trainers. Like uh, me, for example, I'm the SAP or one SAP trainer for the ADM 920, which is an IDM course um, in the German speaking region. <clears throat> Exciting is SAP Silver Partner in Service Authorization, SAP Analytics and Database and Data Management. <clears throat> and has the SAP recognized expertise certificate in the governance risk and compliance area. Since last year, Exciting has a SAP certification of XAMS for integration uh, with SAP S4 HANA. So here we see, um, like I mentioned, our headquarters in Switzerland and the subsidiaries all over the world. And um, yeah, we're still growing and getting new great employees. So here's an overview of the portfolio of Exciting. We have um, three sections. So the first section are our products, then we have the services and the consulting. Um, in the products, you will find our tools, the XAMS for the authorization management and the XCW as a small identity management within uh, ABAP systems. The services are, for example, our trainings, um, which are on the one hand side, official SAP courses in the German speaking region, and also um, yeah, individual trainings or workshops at customers, um, like I mentioned, the S4 HANA migration or RFC redesigns. Um, the third section is the consulting, for example, our part or our topic today uh, within the SAP identity management. So let's see what are the challenges and why did we decide to de develop uh, our own IDM user interface? First of all, there's no Fury strategy from SAP for the SAP identity management. And for them of you who know the WebDunpro UI, it's pretty out of date. And we had also some potential customers which are interested in SAP IDM, but they rejected the project just because of the user interface. So we wanted to develop a new IDM UI with a modern interface and a better user experience. And our goal was to implement it on the available server. So no new hardware is needed and it should be developed after SAP best practices and should be extended and customized via the development environment Eclipse or via the web IDE. So let's see what is our solution. Here's a first uh, quick architectural overview um, just to get in touch with it. M most of these parts uh, should be, um, yeah, uh, should also be known by you. So we have the AS Java on the right side, which is our red box. We have the IDM, which is a gray box on the on the left side. Um, on the AS Java, we have the REST API, 
with a version two, which is available since SB6, which connects um, the UI, which is deployed on the AS Java with the IDM database on the left side. So we have the end user on the right side. He connects to our Fiori user interface, authenticates against the IDM UMA, which is IDM standard. Um, through the REST API, the user gets all information, for example, the forms and the data in these forms directly from the IDM database. These forms are previously imported or created within the Eclipse and saved in the database and, and then are available to the user on the uh, yeah, on the user interface. Um, all changes which will be made in the in the Eclipse, for example, forms um, or add attributes or entry types, which are will be saved directly in the database, are available immediately in the UI. But we'll see this later in the, in the demonstration. So here's the first uh, peek into the UI. We have uh, on the left side, the uh, also already known Web Dunpur UI, which is not so nice. Um, we have on the top the tabs, for example, the self-service tab, the to-do tab, and the manage tab. Um, then you are able to select the entry type, for example, the person, search for the person, uh, select the person, and then you can select a form um, which should be used for this person. On the right-hand side, we have um, the Sci-Fi SP3, which uses the Fury 3 libraries and has the so-called Fury cards, um, which are the um, yeah, which came after the Fury tiles. It's a little bit different view than the WebDunper UI. So we have the tabs and the WebDunper UI on the left-hand side in the um, in the Sci-Fi. So we have the self services the to-do tab and the manage tab. But like I mentioned, we will see it a little bit later in the system. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, we have the, the tabs on the left side and we can search for a user, for example, my user. And once we have selected the user, we get all available cards for this user. Um, if you want to, to change something in the Fury UI, you don't have to go into the Fury code. You can change everything in the Eclipse. So for example, you open the formula, then you can change the, um, the, um, yeah, the attributes and, and can move it up and down. So it will also be moved in the Fury UI. You can change the presentation type for example, the radio buttons here for the user type or a drop down, and then it will also be modified directly in the UI. So you change it in the Eclipse for the WebDunper UI and the Fury UI um, yeah, together. <clears throat> Here's an implementation process of the Fury user interfaces, which is pretty easy. So you will get two SCA files, you get two IDM packages and your license certification. Um, then you have to deploy those two SCA files on the AS Java. You have to import the packages into your Eclipse and then just activate the license in the R Java. And after that, you are available or you have the opportunity to call the Fury UI via Hostname colon port slash exciting adaptive UI. And if you're familiar with uh, IDM, you know the URL for your IDM is host name colon port slash IDM. So it's um, yeah, nearly the same. Um, here's our roadmap. 
as you see, uh, we have a new service pack planned every six months. And our next service pack will be available by the end of June. And the biggest updates in the SP4 are a UI for the attestation. So you are able to um, review your authorizations of the users. Um, we are planning to add the approval management, which is available in the Webinful UI, and then it should be available in the Fury. Um, and we are planning to add the historical values of an user, of an attributes of the user in the UI. Before we jump into the system, let's look at the benefits of our Fury UIs. So first, it's adaptable and very easy to modify. Like I mentioned, forms, attributes, and entry type properties can be changed in the Eclipse, and all changes are immediately available in the Fury UI. Secondly, um, it's multilingual. So depending on the language of the logged in user, the language texts are pulled in this language from the um, IDM system. Um, of course, it's important that these languages are maintained in your system. Uh, with design variants, it's very easy to modify the look of the UI and integrate it into your corporate design. Um, it's, it has a role-based access, so that means depending on assigned business roles, the end user will, will not see any available data, but we'll see this, this in a moment. Um, like in the Webdunpur UI, it's possible to mark forms as favorites. Um, and if a user has favorites saved in the Webdunpur UI, they will be shown as favorites in your Fury UI. Um, as we have seen in the roadmap, um, you will get regular updates on each service pack. Like I mentioned, it's planned all, uh, every six months. So now let's jump in the system. I've prepared something. So at first I will show you the web Dimple UI for those who, who are not com uh, common with the UI. Um, we have several tabs on the top. We have the self services tab, the to do tab, the manage tab, which are the most important tabs for, our, for us today. Um, the self service tab are available for each user who has access to the UI. Um, for example, he can reset his, his password or can request a telephone number or anything else. Um, for example, we can jump into the formula change own data. And there you see we have several attributes like my uh, user ID, my display name, and so on. This is the data from, like I mentioned, the logged in user. Um, you can change, for example, or add, for example, uh, um, data for my mobile number and save it. And then it's in the system. If we jump now back into the UI on the, on the EDM UI, we can go to our manage tab, search for my user, select my user, and then we see it here at the bottom, the new telephone number which is entered is available. Um, let's have a jump back to the to-do tab. The to-do tab <clears throat> shows all open approvals for your user. So you see my user has no open approval at the moment. Um, like I mentioned, we are planning the approval management tab, which is the last tab here, um, to add it in the Fury UI. And if we select it here, click go, <clears throat> then we see uh, we have one open approval in the system. Um, and we want to add this into the Fury UIs. So depending on the, um, yeah, on the setting of the approvals, I'm now available to decline this request or escalate it or um, delegate it to another user. Now we can go back to the um, manage tab. 
we have selected my user. We can select the task, change identity. We select choose task, identity, and then change identity. So now we see the same view as before, just some more um, attributes are available to change. Um, just to get a view how it's done in IDM, if you jump here into our Eclipse, which is a, a development environment, we have here the formula modify identity, which is, is this form, the change identity. So here on the top right corner, we see we have the development attribute, a uh, department attribute, then a line, and then we have the building. If we change this line, for example, put it one uh, spot up, save it, and now refresh the UI, we see the line is moved up immediately. Um, this is yeah, like it's done before in, in IDM in the web for UI. Now I would jump into the Fury UI, give you an overview of the Fury UI, and then we'll look into the same uh, form and see how it's changed in both forms. So now here I'm logged in with my user in our Fury UI. Just refresh it. See on the left side, we have the self-service tab, which is the um, default um, tab or uh, default section. Then we have our favorites. So all of these attributes are the favorites of my user. We have the to do tab, like we see, we've seen before. I, I've now opened approvals, and then I can select an entry type, for example, the person, the role, or the privilege. In our case, we select the person. Now I'm able to search for a user, to stick to my user can select my user and then we get <clears throat> all available formulas for my user. For example, my three favorite tasks and we have two create tasks and then we have different tasks, for example, the change identity. So now we can jump back to the web to UI just to have an um, yeah, overview. We have the tops on the top general attributes, account attributes, and so on. If you now look into the Fury UI, you see it here as well. Um, the general attributes, account attributes, assigned roles, and so on. And if we select one of these, the IDM scrolls, uh, the Fury UI scrolls down to the section, and you are able to change some of these data. If you Recognized again, we have the line here on the top, on the right top, then the department. In the Fury, it looks the same. So depending on the on the form in the Eclipse, the UI will be generated in the WebDunPro, which is delivered from idea from SAP. And it will be generated in the Fury UI, just like it's in the Eclipse. So if we now change the line again, if we move the line below the department, we save it and then refresh the UI, the show UI, you see yeah. we'll see in a minute that the line is now below the department. So this is one big improvement that you don't have to change anything in the code. Another thing is, you know, oh, it's now in German, but if you change, for example, the presentation type of this title, you can go to our Eclipse, open the attribute, which is MX Salutation, and select, for example, radio button, save it, and now refresh the UI again. And you see, now we have the possibility to select a radio button for our title. So now we can change it and it's 
also changed in the uh, webtoon for UI. So we have the Mrs. and Mr. also here. So um, another point which can be changed very easily, which is um, the same um, as in the webtoon for UI, if we are going to our entry type MX person, we have the columns in here. Um, unique ID, which is a user ID, and display name, last name, first name, and our primary email. And it's possible to change these um, attributes, which are shown in this table, very easy. If you're going to the entry type MX person, you have the possibility to select attributes which are listed in this table. Um, so we have these five columns right now. If we remove the annex male primary from the list column here, save the entry type, and now refresh the UI. <coughs> and you see, we go back to annex person, and then it's done. And the email address is removed from this table without any change in the Fury user interface. Like I mentioned before in the um, benefits, it's role-based access. So my user is now an admin user, so I get all entry types listed in here. I've prepared an other user. Just check it out here. So I'm logged in as Tim Cole. Refresh it once again. So we see the self-services for Tim. We see the favorites to do and the manage shop. And if we open the manage shop, we see Tim has only access to the person's privileges and roles. So it's very easy to minimize the access of different users. Now look back into my user. I have all um, entry types available. Tim has only these three types available. Now, as we are logged in as Tim, maybe you can you um, recommend or recognize um, that he has an open approval. You can go to the to do tab, and here we see there's one open approval for Tim. Uh, it was requested on the uh, 23rd of February um, for Janina Meister, and it's a role which is requested. You can select the approval and see all informations of, of this approval. It's an ad, it's for the um, Janina Meister and we have the role name in here. If the approver don't know what's in the role, so then you can click on the name. Oops, you can click on the name, you can log in at the, with the user again. Oh, come on. Usually he should jump into the um, display form. Um, sorry for that. Um, we get all different information which are also available in the web for UI. We see when the approval will expire. So it's uh, on Tuesday, the 16th of March. We have a list of approvers. In this case, we only have Tim Cole as approver. If we have more than one user, all approvers will be shown in this table. Um, we also will see uh, which approvals are required and which are uh, performed and which are not performed. And we have an approval history. So in this case, the role was requested by Janina. Uh, it was declined by Tim. And then Janina requested a retry and now it's again at Tim to approve this. All right. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, so here are some of our references. You will get this presentation afterwards sent to you. And here's here also my contact data. If you need any further information, don't hesitate to contact me. And yeah, thank you very much.